Hello and welcome back my fellow path integrator. Today we have another beautiful integral to solve and we will solve an integral that will give us the area of a circle as you can see here and as you have probably already seen in the thumbnail. All right, so how are we gonna do it? Well, first of all, how is a circle defined? So a circle has a constant radius, but what is the actual definition of a circle? Well, if we have the radius r and we square the radius and we have a Cartesian coordinate system like we have it here on the left hand side with x and y coordinates, then r squared would be equal to x squared plus y squared. And this is because of the Pythagorean theorem. So therefore, just take another coordinate system, Cartesian coordinate system here which we draw like here, and then we draw a circle, which looks a bit awful, but we made it beautiful. All right, so let's increase that a little bit in size. Put it here, and now take a little look at a point on the circle. Maybe let's take another color here. So let's take this point on the circle. So this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and this point on the circle obviously has a y coordinate and an x coordinate. So this is the coordinate. But at the same time, this uh, point on the circle has a distance from the center of the circle, which is the radius of the circle. And now we just apply the Pythagorean theorem where we have this here, this distance here is x and this distance here is y and we have x squared plus y squared in the Pythagorean theorem is equal to r squared. And this is where the definition of a circle is coming from. But now you have seen this integral above here. So how do we get this integral? Well, we just have to use this equation here and re-express it in terms of y. So we have r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And this means that y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. And this means that y independency of x is the square root of r squared minus x squared. And now we're about to find out where this integral is coming from with the integrand being the square root of r squared minus x squared. Because if we want to find out what the area of the circle is, we have to integrate over this part here, this function here, from 0 to r. And then what we will get is a quarter of the area of a circle. So in the end, we will have that the area of a circle is four times the integral from 0 to r over the function of r squared minus x squared and of course dx. So all we have to do now is we have to solve this integral and then we will get the area of a circle. I find this is absolutely amazing. And the integral is actually easy to solve. We just have to apply a simple substitution. So let's jump right into it, shall we? So what are we going to do? So I'm going to switch back to green as uh, you will see now. So this is the integral. Then we have this integral is four times and then we extract the r squared out of the square root. So we will get an r. Since r is constant, we can also extract it out of the integral because we're only integrating with respect to x. So we have four r outside of the integral times the integral from zero to r over one minus, and then we have x squared over r squared dx. <coughs> I'm sorry for this. I have been a little bit sick. All right, um, let's keep on doing the integral and we perform our first easy substitution. This is not a real substitution, but let's call it a substitution. So what we do is we define u as x over r. It is a real substitution. Just forget what I just said. And then the derivative of u with respect to x is just 1 over r and this means that dx is equal to r times du. So we plug that into our integral so we have 4 times r times another r from this r du. So we have 4 r squared 
we just extract the r out of the integral again because it is a constant times and now we have to substitute the borders the limits of the integral as well so the limits of the integral let's write that here is u of zero so we plug for x we plug zero so this is just zero and then we plug u of r so we plug in r for x so we have r over r and r over r is just one so the limits of the integral go from zero to one we have the r squared outside of the integral and then we have a square root of one minus u squared du and this looks a lot like something we could substitute with the cosine or the sine. You know, because the sine squared of an angle phi plus the cosine squared of an angle phi is equal to 1. Which means that 1 minus the sine squared of an angle phi is equal to cosine squared of this angle phi. So what we will do now is we will substitute u as... Um, as the sine of phi um, and this will look like this so we have u ah no u is equal to the sine of phi sorry I got a little bit confused by my own writing here and by a weird message my computer sent me concerning the microphone on which I'm speaking right now but I hope this didn't uh, distract you too much. All right, so we have the substitution of u being the sine of phi, and then we have du with respect to uh, d phi is equal to the cosine of phi, and this means that du is equal to d phi, or let's write cosine phi d phi. Okay, this is the first part. Then we have to substitute the limits as well. So the limits we have phi of u is the arc sine of u so we have phi of zero so where does the sine get uh, become zero so this is zero so the lower limit stays and then we have phi of one so where does the sine get uh, one this is the arc sine of one and this is for pi over two and all of this we plug that into our integral so we have 4r squared times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 times the integral of 1 minus sine squared of phi times now we plug this in cosine phi d phi all right we're almost at the end that's amazing so we have 4r squared times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 1 minus sine squared of phi we see that here is cosine squared of phi we have that in the square root so we have the square root of cosine squared is just cosine and then we have the cosine multiplied with the cosine so we have the integral over cosine squared d phi so this integral, we can just look it up. What is the solution? So if we have an integral from a to b over cosine squared of phi d phi, then this will be one half of um, phi over two plus sine of phi, cosine of phi, and the whole thing evaluated at the limits b and a. Did I do a mistake? Yeah, I think I did a mistake here. I think it's only a phi here. All right. Yes, it's only a phi here. <laughs> Sorry for that mistake. So what we have here, we just plug that in, this uh, solution for the integral. If you want me to do um, a more detailed um, calculation of how to get the integral of cosine squared of phi, just let me know in the comments. But I just thought because it's a very common integral i don't have to elaborate on this one here anymore all right so that is what we have um, as a solution for the integral so we just plug that in so we have 4r squared and then we have the one half times pi over 2 and then plus the sine of phi so the sine of pi over 2 um, which is 1 times the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So this term cancels 
each other out both for pi over 2 and for for 0 so all we are left with since plugging in 0 for phi will just uh, result in 0 that we can just drop the plus here and the brackets here and we just um, write a, a multiplication sign here a dot and then we will have 4 r squared times pi over 4 which is pi times r squared and here we are this is the solution to the integral this is the area of a circle and it's absolutely amazing if you take a look at it we just performed some very easy substitution integration and with that we could derive a very beautiful and very simple formula for the next video i by the way plan to do the same thing for an ellipse um, because that's a very amazing uh, integral as well and it's being solved in a very similar way like this one and uh, it's a very good preparation um, for one of my future videos that I'm planning which is the derivation of Kepler's first law so the law that all planets orbit the sun in ellipses and it's actually a very cool uh, derivation and it uses only some basic Newtonian mechanics and uh, of course some calculus to um, find out that the actual shape of the orbit of a planet is an ellipse um, but yeah it's actually basic methods and that's quite amazing so oh it said my uh, it said my uh, storage is full I'm sorry that you had to see that all right um, let's just go to the end I mean I just showed you all the integral and probably you've just clicked away if you haven't clicked away already although I'm talking a lot here uh, thank you very much thank you very much for uh, staying with me until this very spot until this very point in the video um, if you haven't subscribed already uh, please subscribe that would be amazing leave a like for the video that would be amazing too it helps with the algorithm and I don't know recently I've been ignored by the algorithm and I wonder if if it's like the quality of the videos or if it's just the algorithm so also let me know maybe if you're one of my subscribers if you would have something changed if you think something dropped in quality would be nice to know yes um that's it. That's all. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye, my fellow path integrator.